So I've been putting this job off for a while simply because I know what I'm going to be getting involved in and what it is is I can smell antifreeze in the cab. I kind of pushed it last winter driving this thing as long as I could in hopes of being able to use the vehicle before having to make that repair and I, I got lucky. It, I, I was able to, to drive it throughout the winter but the problem is is that you can smell the antifreeze when you smell the antifreeze that's telling you that you got a leaking heater core inside there this, this is one of those jobs that ends up throwing a vehicle into the scrap pile because you take it to a place to go get fixed and they're going to quote you a lot of money and with the age of this vehicle they're likely going to tell you that it ain't worth it the the cost of the vehicle isn't worth the cost of the repair and it's because of all the labor that's involved. So first and foremost, if uh, your air conditioning is still working, that's going to have to be drained and captured by somebody. If you know where you can take that and get that done. If you have a vehicle where your, um, your air conditioning isn't working because it's old and there was a leak and it's all leaked out, you can move forward with no, no worries. So inside here, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to remove our two seats, give us some room to work with. We're going to have to remove this center console, get that out of the way. And then we are going to have to drop down our uh, steering column and we have to remove all of our dash. After all those things are removed, then we can get at that HVAC system, which is going to be bolted in around this area here up against the firewall. Technically, if you break it down, you know, removing the seats shouldn't be too bad. Removing that center console is probably, I think, uh, just a bunch of screws in the bottom of there. And then you just uh, kind of wiggle that around to get it off of your uh, shifter and stuff like that. So those two, not so bad. Uh, there'll be some bolts in the bottom of the steering column there that you can drop that down. You don't need to remove the steering column, but you have to drop it down to help you remove the uh, dash and then the dash there should be if we remove this panel on the top there should be some fasteners up there and then we should have some on the sides uh, on both both sides and possibly in the center here now if everything goes well we can just simply uh, remove all those fasteners and we can uh, make our uh, electrical disconnects in the back and hopefully that whole thing can come out in one assembly. Got both of those seats removed. There's gonna be four bolts on either one, two in the front here, two in the back, and that should be a 13 millimeter. And then you have the center console. So you want to uh, put your key uh, to run and then uh, you can move your shifter here. There's going to be four uh, Phillips screws underneath of here, one in each corner. You remove those, just use a flat screwdriver to kind of pry this up and manipulate it so you can get at those screws. Uh, flat screwdriver to pop this up too. There are gonna be the electrical connections to disconnect off of there and there for the light, interior lighting. And then there's going to be two screws, Phillips screws down at the bottom there. You remove those. And now what you'll have to do is you'll have to basically lift your emergency brake cable uh, lever up and manipulate this thing, uh, get it out of the way and remove that. Got that center console out and what you need to do is you're gonna need to remove that piece that goes in there and this piece that comes off of here. Those will come out of there and now you've got this window to pull that uh, lever out you're probably going to have to pull the lever back try and get this out so what i had done was i had lifted this back up and lifted it up and then i kind of wiggled these two pieces uh, out and free from the uh, the handles for the shifter and the uh, four-wheel drive so this stays on there uh, indicator for gear selection turn it this way turn it sideways and then you're going to try to feed that with the shifter all through that hole as you're lifting it up this way and kind of like manipulating it to get it out and you see that i have that four by four lever uh, pulled back and i also lifted up the uh, emergency brake lever as well to get that center console uh, out of there next thing i did was i took out this uh, glove box here there was uh, there was four Phillips screws on the bottom and then in the sides here here and uh, here there was some rivets so I basically drilled those rivets out 
a Phillips screwdriver to take out those four screws. That gets out the glove box up top here. This uh, top panel, just use a flat screwdriver. Start it off from here, slowly, gently working your way. Lift that up all the way over to the driver's side. Once you've got it free, you gotta twist this thing out. That's, I think, the sensor for the alarm or whatever it is. Anyways, you gotta, you gotta twist that out of there and then you can remove the panel. So you wanna be gentle because these are your, these are your uh, connectors in here all the way along and you get too forceful in there and then you these these are easily broken so you just want to take your time be patient and uh, gently kind of work those up and out of there we've got some dash disassembly to do here and first off on the passenger side you just got to remove this piece here all you got to do is pinch it there and pull on it start breaking it free and then pull it out all it has is a couple of these tabs on there that are holding it in so you just should be able to pull that out by hand no problem once you've got that out this side of the dash here we've already removed our glove box and those were our uh, screws went for that so on this one here you've got a screw on the side you might need a stubby screwdriver to fit in here if you don't have uh, enough space with the door in the way and stuff like that so you've got uh, one on the side so you'll just have this one here with the map light on the bottom and then you're going to have these ones up here you got one two three four on the top there you're going to have these two here one two and then you have to remove your ashtray and then you can get at these ones here and there's going to be two two back here you remove those and I do believe that's all of the screws we've removed the ones on the bottom here for the glove box and you can see this is where that rivet is that I had to drill out and the other one was over here it just fell out of there uh, now <clears throat> this whole thing comes out but you gotta be gently Bentley because when you flip it over here the only thing holding this on is just these two screws right there pretty delicate stuff and then you've got to unplug your cigarette lighter and your power output and then there's going to be a light bulb that goes in there and then connector for your light bulb for when you open up your uh, glove box right there so this this portion in here is pretty gentle you want to take some care uh, removing that so it doesn't get broken here on the driver's side same thing you've just got this uh, front bezel on there you're going to grab it somewhere in there and you're going to pull pull that out same thing just got some tabs in there that are holding it those are the three tabs so this side on the bottom here again you're going to have a screw on the side and then as we flip this over you can see we've got our screws on the bottom here so you've got those four this one on the side and you're gonna have one two these are by the steering column and that's it once you've removed those ones by the steering column there's there's nothing else there this should just come out and again you've got your little pins there for that piece so maybe you want to be a little gentle so you don't you don't break that piece because it's just that just that small little piece there so that removes the bottom we want to remove our bezel from our gauges here as we take that out you have your series of screws along the top underneath one two three four five so you've got two above the steering column either side there and you're gonna have another two on each corner one there and one on the other end right there so once you've removed all those screws that should pull out and what you want to do is just kind of force your fingers in underneath of this and then and then just kind of pull it forward and down and uh, it should come out fairly easily